What is good, everyone? Welcome back to yet another installment of Red Cat Live, the one episode where I think I know something about RCs, but quite frankly, I just fumble things. But we're here. We're having a great time, and I got a great new episode for you guys. Uh, we got a great knowledge base episode set up for you guys. We're going to bring none other than Eric Saraceno representing the Gens Ace camp. Gens Ace is a battery manufacturer that has supplied a multitude of different ba batteries for uh, different purposes and we'll get into that here in a little bit so without further ado let's bring eric on board and uh, let's welcome him the only way we know how you know what because he knows i'm a taco fan L let's throw some taco emojis at him guys so if you guys are here as soon as you guys see him let's just throw all the tacos you can at him let's do it so uh welcome on board what is going on my brother eric Sarceno, what's up everybody who i've never met or ever talked to before in my life What's up, bro? How are you? Oh, man, this is awesome, man. I've been a fan of yours since the day one of the Lowrider scene, man, watching you, Mr. Taco himself. Oh, man, this is this is an honor. You know, I, I'm just something I'm going to tell my children about for the rest of my life. Um, I got to share the screen with Senior Red Cat himself. That's I mean, this is, this is a dream come true. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you, you know get, what I mean? You know, it, it, it's kind of cool when I go to events and I have pull and I can be like, I know Eric from Gen Z's. It's, it's yeah, no, of, that's how I feel, man. It's kind of a nice drop, you know? Um, man, dude, welcome to the show. I know it's your first time on, man. I, I love it. I know we're going to talk about some really cool stuff. And for a lot of people, information that they, A, have never heard before, B, are just new to the hobby and trying to get an idea of what works best for their product, um, and as well as kind of like safe keep, safekeeping and storaging of batteries, right? So, um Without further ado, you know, give me one second. I'm going to say what's up. You got tacos flying at you left and right, bro, just so you know. We got <laughs> <laughs> RC Bettina guy says, what is going on, Eric? Uh, we got Louis Alcala in the house. Richard White, what is good? All the way from Virginia. We got some guy named Brandon Tomey from uh, Bay Alarm. I don't know if you know him or not. He's pretty cool, too. Um, we got uh, Clay Keats is in the house. What's good, brother? Dave Leilani, King Taco. You know it. I'm in the house. <laughs> and just so you guys know, I did. I demolished a bunch of tacos today, so I feel really good. No fasting this week. He got the full swing of me. I, I even had a little bit of coffee before, so I'm like, oh, why? Let's do this. Uh, but, man, it's going to be it's gonna be a great show, man. Uh, and uh, I really have been looking forward to this one since you and I talked about this last month. Um, so, Eric, who are you, in essence? What is your background, if you can give me a little bit of your RC experience? Uh, and then let's get into Gen Zays. Who are they and uh, why are we here talking? Yeah, no, of course. And I mean, you can't be telling people that we planned this last month, man. I have a, I have a reputation to uphold of doing things on the fly. So hey, you can't be telling people that. ASD callers are known for <laughs> notoriously late live feeds <laughs> and just pop up information. So when you're talking about the squad, that's the way it rolls. Harvey yeah, Pryor, no man, what's up, brother, man? Um, but yeah, I know. I mean, a little bit about myself. I mean, I like long walks on the beach. My family's from a little town in Guatemala. You know what I mean? Uh, no, but I've been in the RC hobby for um, almost a decade now. I mean, I was 18, 19 when, you know, I got my first hobby grade RC and I'm pushing 30 with a kid now. So, uh, you know, we've been doing this for a while. Um, I'm blessed to have been with this company uh, through the pandemic. So, uh, you know, Gen Zace has been a good home for me. Um, I was a team driver for Gen Zace for years before this. So I've run products back you know before any of these labels existed back when uh gen zace was just kind of starting out and i've kind of stuck with them ever since and you know there's 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 a lot of reasons why and we'll probably get into a lot of them today i love it man there's a uh, quite a bit of information that you carry in your brain when it comes to batteries right uh you've been in the hobby you know for quite some time i know you and i We've known each other for years in that aspect, right, uh, from crawling events all up and down the California coast um, and so on. So, you know, once you join the Gen Z's team or, in essence, the, the company, um, your job was to do marketing and so on, right? So, obviously, they I'm assuming they send you through a crash course of Gen Z's. Can you kind of describe a little bit of the background that comes with that knowledge? Yeah, of course. I mean, Gen Zace, you know, a lot of people hear that name and they'll think we're a big company, but no, I mean, we're a small office here uh, in California, Northern California. There's 10 to 15 people in our office, uh, including our warehouse people, including our sales, 
Um, I am the marketing department here. And, you know, with us having that small company feel, you know, we wear a lot of hats. So, uh, you know, I do a lot of the research and development for Gen Base as well. So anytime there's a, you know, new products out in the market, I have some sort of a, you know, effect on them. So you're right. There's a lot of education that comes with it. I mean, my first almost month here was just straight knowledge, uh, learning, you know, voltages, learning the formulas, learning what really goes on in one of these batteries in depth. Um, you know, basically it, it's like going back to school. So, um, you know, luckily I did okay in chemistry back in, uh, back in high school. So I, I, I kind of hung in there a little bit, you know, I know that there's a periodic table somewhere. That's, that's, that's what I knew. <laughs> no, but it's a lot of education and, uh, you know, I, I, I feel really comfortable with it now. And it's something that honestly has helped me understand my setups now, because I do, like you said, I do crawling. Um, I do drag racing. I do, you know, a little bit of everything. I have a low rider at home, you know, waiting for the money to come, but Santa is a little late right now. Uh, Santa also yeah, just it, had it tacos. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, it definitely helps me with my hobby. Um, just to enjoy it a little bit more. Cause I'm a little bit of a nerd when it comes to the tunes and the, uh, you know, the build aspect of things. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that, uh, that I knew about you when we first met was you had this really awesome bomber style Ford F three fifty build that you were working on, right? Yeah. And that was like the one thing to me I was like, that stood out. And I knew that this kid had potential and that he was gonna go places within the hobby and you know, so on and so on. Um, you know, and I says we've kind of become like a family, you know, well we are, we're all family, but um it's it's been a journey, right? In, in that sense. And uh, one cool thing that I've admired, quite frankly, since you joined the Gen's Ace, you know, company is the amount of knowledge that you bring to the table, right? So now when we're all out and about and we're talking batteries, it's really cool and refreshing to kind of look over at you and see you take that on and, and know that. And, and it's just, hey, it's just another um, tool in your tool bag, you know? No, definitely. I mean, yeah, it's like they said when we were kids, you know, knowledge is power and, you know, that's, you know pen is mightier than the sword all of that it, it's true and it gives you so much confidence knowing you know when you really know your stuff it's you know you kind of feel a little swagger in your step when you're talking to somebody because you know i know what i'm talking about now and you know i i thought i knew what i was talking about before but going in depth of these things is it, it's next level it's crazy no doubt man no doubt and you know and, and again for what it's worth man it's been awesome to see the growth uh I've been a fan of Gen's Ace for years. Uh, my first Gen's Ace pack was the leopard print, gold and black yeah. case, hard case, two cell. Um, and that's what I used on the track, you know, when I used to dabble a little bit with Slash, you know, racing. Just so everyone knows, I'm horrible at racing. Like, I gave up on it. I tried drag racing. I, that, that didn't do really well. So, <laughs> Non nonetheless, man, I, I always try to kind of have a good time in a competitive fashion. And I know my limits, so I like to go low and slow, so it's low riding and crawling for me. And one thing that I love about Gen's Ace is you guys offer batteries for a multitude of situations. Not just an RC-related scenario, um, but as well as even cinematography and so on. Tell us a little bit about Gen's Ace, the background, and what you guys bring to the table when it comes to batteries, not just in the RC world, but worldwide. Yeah, definitely. So uh, Gen's Ace is, you know, it, it's just a small drop in the bucket. You know, when we, when we talk about our company, um, you know, like you said, we make a little bit of everything for everybody. And that's kind of the, the perk of being a manufacturer in the, in the, uh, uh, in the industry is that we have that overhead to be able to make kind of, you know, more niche, uh, products and more, you know, specialized batteries, you know, our company, uh, like I said, we own the manufacturing plant so we can make, you know, all sorts of shapes, sizes, um, you know, a little bit easier than a lot of companies would just because we have, you know, the technology, we have the engineering department to do that, um, which allows us to make, you know, batteries smaller than this little guy all the way up to, you know, 12 cell batteries, like you said, for cinematic drones under our uh, tattoo battery. So, um, we, you know, we cover, you know, pretty much big agricultural drones, um, under tattoo, um, anything filming, uh, you know, fire drones, things like that kind of all fit under our, uh, under our repertoire. So we have a little bit of everything, um, which is really cool. Nice. Um, if I remember correctly, back when I visited the location that you guys have out there in Livermore, um, I also heard that you guys even carry 
medical grade batteries? Is that a, is that a correct statement? So there, we make, I mean, our company does make lithium batteries. So we make, if, you know, if, if there's something to be made lithium, then that's something that we are always exploring. So, I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. I, I, we have a list full of the things that we make and, you know, obviously have some of them I can't really speak on, but, you know, it, it's really amazing to see you, just the scope of what we can get to. Listen, I've been on live feeds with you in the past and I've been on podcasts in the past. All right. And I know that you are <laughs> the king of leaks, which you get people to tell you something that they may not have been ready to tell. So if you don't mind, I'm going to just harness my inner Eric Sarceno and I'm going to come at you left and right and see if I can get a little bit of a little sneak attack out of you and see what we got coming out. So, um, you know, <laughs> with that said, you know, Gen Zace has been well known worldwide. You know, you got guys on here that are big fans of Gen Zace. They're all showing love. Uh, Jerry's is in here as well, you know, proudly representing Gen Zace and the batteries that he uses yeah. as well. You guys have been around the block many times. It's not the first time. You guys have been in cinematography. In fact, from what I have been told, you guys, you guys' batteries are the number one choice for most movie cinematographers. You know, we're talking professional stuff using your guys' batteries. So obviously having that experience, having that uh, background is a world in itself, let alone the RC world, right? So, um, but we're focused more on the RC stuff today, right? We're, that's our, our main key point. We know Gen Zace is robust in that fashion. Um, you know, explain to us a little bit about what goes on with, with batteries. You know, um, you have a RC car. I just bought, you know, a, a brand new uh, 64 and I want to throw a lipo in it. Well, then I kind of ask myself, what, where does a lipo come from? What, what's in it? And, you know, can you explain, I guess in the best way possible for our viewers, a better understanding of what batteries uh, actually do in that fashion? Yeah. I mean, so it kind of to, because this is what they had to do with me is, is really dumb it down. You know what I mean? But I, I literally sat there in education. And I was like, look, I need you to explain this as if I was a third grader. Uh, and that's pretty much, you know, what, what they did and so um obviously so it's lithium polymer um would be the full name of a lipo battery versus a nickel metal hydride and you know just kind of to 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 sum it up is the technology in a lipo um just allows the the, the lipo to deliver power a little bit more efficiently um a lot more uh consistently as opposed to a uh nickel metal hydrate battery where um you know kind of to explain it would be you know if you're pouring uh, you know, a jug of water out, right? If you're, if you just pour it out, right, eventually there's going to be less water and it's going to kind of just be consistently less and less. Um, whereas lithium, you know, battery will allow you to, let's say you put that water through a tube, that water is going to come down that tube at the same rate, at the same speed as you pass it down. So it just allows you to channel the energy a little bit more efficiently, um, which is why with the nickel metal hydrate, you you know, after, you know, a few minutes of running, you're going to notice a power decrease. Um, whereas with a lithium polymer battery, the entire runtime, you should see pretty much consistently the same power delivery uh, because the water is flowing at the same speed, flowing at the same rate and the same amount each time. Whereas with a nickel, it's just kind of everything comes out at once as soon as it can. Nice, nice. So, you know, yeah. that's, that's in essence the difference between a lipo and a nickel metal hydrate, right? Mm -hmm. um, in that same breath what would be the difference in the way we charge discharge and or store lipo versus mm -hmm. nickel metal hydrate yeah of course and you know with with nowadays people you know kind of call nickel metal hydrate yesterday's technology and i'm guilty of that as well um yes. but there is still a place for nickel in the world um you know the there is a safety aspect of it which you know does help people feel a little bit better you know it, it's a give and take just with anything right um, you know, with a nickel metal hydrate, you're able to charge it differently um, and a little bit less uh, finesse would be kind of the best word to use with it. Um, you're able to, you know, load it, unload it and not really have to worry about it. Similar to like the lead acid battery, a lead acid with your car, right? You can kind of set your car on a charger, you can jump it and zap it and it's, you know, pretty much going to be robust where lithium is going to be a little bit more finicky, but as long as you take care of it, it's going to give you a really long lifetime and um, a lot of power and so um yeah it, it, lipo is, is in my eyes is still the, the way of the future um it's lighter um it's more efficient 
there's a you know it's it's completely different it's apples and oranges um but like i said nickel does still have uh it's it's places i mean the 64 is a great platform that really proves that um yes you can get a lot of runtime with a uh with a lipo but you know using something like the nickel which was the red cat 64 was designed for you know you're going to get a little bit more of that weight you're gonna you're not going to need um as much of the power you can get ample runtime with it because the power system and it was designed to be a little bit less uh, draining than sure. most systems are so you know it's all you know application is, is really big with that sure is there a you know a, a, a i guess a limit to how many charges one can get out of either battery um so nickels there isn't really because you can kind of just keep going eventually the cells will give out um the beauty of lipos is you can change the chemistry within each one. So you can get different numbers um, if you just kind of play with the formula a little bit. So something with maybe a little bit less of a C rating, which is the the, the current that it's delivering the power at, um, is going to last you a little bit longer because you're not draining it as fast. So you can get, you know, from a race battery, something like our red lines, um, some of these guys are charging them at ridiculous amp ratings uh, and they're getting anywhere from 50 to 200 cycles. So that means, you wow. know, charging and discharging, including their, their driving. Um, whereas something like your, you know, regular 5,000, 5,000 milliamp, I have batteries that are 10 years old and still running strong um, because I take a little bit more care of them. They don't need to pull as much power as a, as a rate a red line would. And so, you know, it, it's really all in how you care for your battery. Right, right. And, and guys, everyone that's listening right now, we're going to go over some of the questions that you guys are going to be asking. Uh, please save them for a little bit towards the end. We're going to ask Eric all of your questions as possible. Uh, but this one kind of seems fitting. Um, why does a LiPo battery seem to work better the more uses uses or cycles get put on it? Is that a thing? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's definitely a thing. And um, you know, it, it's basically, it goes back to, you know, when you get a battery, it's in storage mode, right? So it's sitting at about 50 to 40 to 50% of its charge rate. Um, pretty much what happens is, you know, think about like, it's like an energy boost, right? So if you charge your battery at a certain amp rating, you're, you're kind of waking it up in a sense, just to kind of, you know, use kind of that, those terms. And, um, you know, the more you do it, when you cycle a battery, I always recommend cycling your battery. So, you know, anywhere from a 1C to a 3C rating, um, depending on the battery itself, um, you know, it, it really definitely can wake up the battery. Um, and it, what it does is basically the, the energy transfer, you know, can help with the resistance that you get um, with the battery. So basically, you know, it, it opens up the gateway a little bit more for the battery to, to um, you know, give you the power. Nice, nice. So it's safe to say that the, the more the battery gets exercised, um, it, it reaches a, a better peak at some point. Uh, Correct. And and on the other nut side of that, you know, if you keep, like I said, with the red lines, you know, these guys are charging at 40 amps and that's not recommended. It doesn't mean you can't do it. It's just basically going to shorten the life of your battery. It does, you know, there is kind of, you know, safety concerns there, but it's, I, I relate it to like a full-size car world where, you know, my V8 out of the straight out of the dealership, you know, no modifications done to it. It's going to run me hundred thousand miles, 200,000 miles, whatever. Um, but if you go and you, you know, put a turbo on it, go and put it on race gas, you go and, you know, get all the, you know, upgrade the pistons, upgrade the cams. You're probably going to break something every time you're out. And that's just kind of the nature of the beast. And that's right. the same idea with charging where, you know, if you, you know, you drive it like a minivan, it's going to last you longer. But if you drive it like you stole it, so, you're going to end up breaking something. So, so, if, so if I drive uh, you know, like eventually you, eventually you will see a little bit of a decrease. So if I drive like you, I'm safe oh, yeah. for a while. But if I drive like Brandon, then I'm going to break something is what you're telling me. Basically, yeah. <laughs> Basically. Dude, I, no, I love it, man. Because all of this information, there's a lot of folks in here that are longtime fans of RC. And we get a lot of uh, follow-up questions where information like this is just crucial. It's the simplest information that doesn't get said often enough right and when you're getting to the hobby and then you buy a ready to run or any kind of car then you're like crap now i also have to add heat charger and a battery you know and first thing someone does is guess what they do they go to amazon and they find all of these off name 
said brands and they're claiming these numbers on the side of the pack with this kind of C discharge rate and um, you know, and a lot of it is, is fudged numbers or, or inflated numbers, so to speak. Um, to the people that don't understand the writing on the side of a battery, uh, just let's keep it as simple as possible. Let's let's call out a, a, a lipo battery. Um, can you explain to the folks what that means, what the writing on them means, so that they can understand yeah. a little bit? I mean, well? of course. Yeah, that's definitely something easy. So, you know, I don't know how well they can see, and I think it's backwards. Um, but obviously, right, the first thing that kind of sticks out, or one of the first things is going to be the voltage. Um, that's going to tell you what the voltage is that you're going to be getting out of the battery. So a 7.4 volt two cell, 11.1 um, is going to be a three cell. And, you know, you kind of just keep adding um, anywhere from three to, to um, I think, four to per cell um, is kind of the range that you're going to get per cell. So you just four, four point two that. volts. Yeah. Okay. So that's full charge. Three, two is like your battery is dead. Three, okay. eight is storage charge. Um, and so um, this is kind of the base voltage, kind of what we call it of, you know, what you're getting out of a battery. So you're consistently going to get about 7.4 volts to your car. So very similar um, to the, the MA rating, the, which is the milliamps per hour is the same as we would see with the nickel metal hydrate, which is the determination of how much power is consumed within an hour. Is that correct? Yeah, basically. So the milliamp rating, like, so this is a fuel cell. That's all it is, right? So the 5,000 milliamp, the milliamp hour uh, milliamp here rating um, is basically how much fuel is in the cell, right? How much runtime you have. Um, a 5,000 is going to have more than a 2,000. Um, so, you know, the higher this, the milliamp hour, the more runtime you're going to get. Um, now, what offsets that is going to be your C rating. So that's the rate that it's the, you know, the current uh, that you're going to be getting at. So a the discharge rating rate? is obviously, yeah, your discharge rate. There you go. Thank you. Um, so that's going to be, you know, the, the, the rate at which, you know, your battery is going to release that power. Um, so 50 C is pretty much the kind of the norm. It's what our, you know, kind of more entry level batteries are going to be at um, 50 C. Sometimes you'll see 60 depending uh, on the battery itself. And then, you know, you kind of go up our highest that we offer um, for the Gen baseline is going to be 130 C, which is going to be our red line batteries. So, the, so w- right? would it be um, would it be safe to say that the gas tank is our milliamp output hours, the MA rating, mm-hmm. while the C discharge would be our octane content, right? Yeah, that's and, and, and that's, kind of in a way, in a, in a, in a layman's term. And I, in, yeah, and I know a lot of you purists out there are going, "Bro, really? You really use that as an analogy?" But think about it. it to the person that is coming into the hobby and is really trying to uh, elevate his knowledge base, that is the, in my opinion, kind of the simplest way of taking that information. Is that accurate? That would be a good way to put it. Yeah, definitely, because it's the same thing. You know, you throw your car on AC seven, and your car's still going to run. You're going to be able to do everything, but if you go on 91, you know, E85, you're definitely going to see a difference and it's not for everybody. And right. you know, your average every day isn't going to really see the difference, right. but or, you're a real hobby as well. Right. Right. Or like, like Aaron just suggested, maybe more so like the size of the fuel line, right? Um, no. So the fuel line would actually be your internal resistance. Oh. Um, so that's, that's kind of getting into it a little bit more. So internal resistance is basically, uh, you know, anytime you add a bridge between, so the fuel line, right? If uh, the, the smaller the fuel line, it doesn't matter how much power you push through. It doesn't matter how good the octane is, you know, you're going to be limited to what you can do. Um, but, you know, if you open up that fuel line a little bit, you're going to get a little bit of a better flow. Um, so that's kind of the best analogy there would be for the fuel line. All right. So I'm going to throw one at you. I got a Kaiju. Let's go. Right. It's, it runs on 6S. Um, I I run two 3S packs. You know, sometimes because the 6S battery by itself is kind of hefty and it can cost, right? Uh, it's a little cheaper to buy mm-hmm. dual 3S batteries sometimes. So um, would a 50C, you know, per battery be adequate for what I want to use it for? If I want to go, you know, all out and, and bash the heck out of this thing? Or would I see more of a benefit going with like two 3S 100C discharge batteries? 
Yeah, no, definitely. So higher C rating, especially with big monsters like that. I mean, I'm sure the Kaiju comes with a big power plant in it. Um, you know, it, it's going to need a lot more uh, of an amp draw to it. And the higher C rating does help kind of dissipate that power and just make it more efficient. Um, um, and you might not necessarily, I mean, obviously you'll get a little bit more of that punch when you, you know, go full throttle, um, but you'll, you'll see it in the long run when you get um, healthier electronics down the road, because you're not stressing them out. Yeah. Ooh, and I think we might have paused with Eric. There he is. He's back. Yeah, I'm right here. All right. There we go. So, um, dude, I love it, bro. You know, a lot of great information in a lot of ways, really in depth in that fashion. Uh, I'm just going to double check to see if there's any questions I can throw at you really quick before we get to the next part of this. Um, no worries. I'm trying to channel my inner Bill Nye and keep it kind of entertaining. I don't want to throw a bunch of formulas at you guys. Bro, have we need, log I don't even know why you're not wearing a lab coat right now. Like, you should totally That would have been, yeah. Should have a, a battery and a beaker, you know, just... <laughs> I'm putting in a request for that now. Oh, uh, do yeah, dude. yeah. Oscar recommended it. Hey, I approve. You're good, bro. <laughs> uh, all right. Let me see. Let me think about batteries. All right. So uh, it's a good question, and we're gonna touch base on that here in a little bit. The question is, I'm good at learning something about these batteries. Uh, then I can choose a good battery that can run in my 64 Impala. Uh, and the stereo system. Uh, so, Marshall, stay with us here in a little bit because we're actually going to talk about batteries uh, that are equivalent or should be used or can be used that Gen Z's offers in some of these platforms. So we'll get into that here in a little bit. Um, first and foremost, though, let's highlight talking about bashers, right? We talked about the Kaiju. Red Cat is known for the Kaiju, Kaiju EXT, the Landslide, um, Bashing is in our blood. We love it. We, we try to give it to people with the best um, features for the buck that we can give people, right? The best bang for the buck in that essence. Um, what, do you, what does Gen Zays offer to the community, the RC community, in a bashing aspect? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we have our – so we have – like I said, being the manufacturer, we're able to kind of offer a little bit more uh, – of a broader spectrum, able to offer more, um, you know, budget friendly, uh, in an essence, right? So, um, our red label batteries, these are kind of our basic batteries. Um, you know, they're, they're great batteries, but, um, you know, kind of the biggest difference is that you're going to get a little bit less C rating, uh, but they're going to be a lot more affordable. So they're easier to replace. Um, they're going to be, um, just, you know, kind of your go-to daily battery. Um, and then you can kind of upgrade, uh, something similar, right? So you're going to get about the same size, right but it's our bashing line so you're gonna get just you know kind of a little bit more milliamp hour uh, but a little less c rating right because bashers you know they have those big kv motors so um you know they'll still run great but you'll be able to be out at a little bit of a longer time um and then we have something like our bashing pros which go all out and you know are going to have 130 c rating and just kind of be that you know, be the corn, the, the corn fuel, if you, if for the, you know, automobile guys out there that know, uh, know what they're talking about. So if they're, uh, you know, if you're looking for that high end, um, you know, it comes with a uh, higher C rating, it's going to have a higher milliamp where we offer them in, you know, I think the lowest one we have is a 6,800 milliamp hour, whereas, you know, these guys go as low as a thousand, 1200 milliamps. So um, you're going to get definitely more runtime, um, but they're a little bit more, of a higher end battery. So we offer something in every, every budget. I love that. I love that because, you know, just like RCs have budgets of all kinds, right? Everyone has a different pocketbook. I love mm -hmm. that Gen Z's keeps that focus on making sure people have options so that they're not like, well, it's either that or nothing. So you either spend $500 on a battery or you don't get no battery, you know? So I love that. I love that you have something for everyone's pocketbook because that's totally crucial. Uh, like Aaron says, uh, your batteries can never be too good. So, <laughs> um, exactly. And batteries are, are very often something that's overlooked, right? People will want high performance out of the vehicles, but then, you know, won't want to spend a little bit extra money on their batteries. And, and it really does make a difference. Um, like I said, if you're just starting out, there's nothing wrong with going with, I mean, I, you know, don't quote me on this, but, you know, even like you're, you know, a little bit more budget friendly Amazon batteries, but it is batteries are very much a, you get what you pay for uh, industry. So, you know, if you're, if you're getting batteries for $15 a piece, where as you know, something like it's, ours is going to be 
25 30 dollars sure you're gonna get that difference whether it's right away or so, down the line so it's, it's safe to say that with batteries it's uh you know you're gonna get what you pay for in that essence right yeah um so I, I love it so you know the I love you guys got something for bashers. That's great. Um, but hey, Red Cat, we got a lot of crawler fans, right? A lot of four by four fans out there. A lot of guys that like to crawl for hours on end, um, you know, tackle each summit, each course, each trail, uh, be the most dominant one and staying out there for a good amount of time. And there's guys out there that run brush. There's guys out there that run brushless, uh, extra lights that are powered on. Uh, does Gen Zays have anything that helps? that crowd by chance yeah definitely so our uh, adventure series batteries are definitely the go-to for my crawling um you know personally they're the ones that i use all of my crawlers um we do offer them in a two and a three s uh version and they're they're pretty much designed with the crawler in mind so they're meant to fit both standard uh of the battery trays that are out on the market so whether it's red cat or any of the other brands um you're gonna fit whether you're running a full-size pack um, they're going to be the same size or you're running a shorty pack. Um, most of the batteries on the market right now are going to be able to fit in, uh, fit ours uh, well. And they're basically made to use the most space out of, you know, out of your battery tray that we can. So we can pack as much milliamp hour so you're out on the trail longer and as much C rating. So you're getting that a little bit of oomph when you're uh, caught up on a rock and, and, and don't want to give up. And, you know, when in doubt, you know, you, you know what happens next. Right, right. You know, in in that aspect, you know, because there's so many different sizes of footprints of what holds a battery. And if you're anything like myself and a lot of the guys that I know, we don't even use the stock battery trays. You know, we end up, yeah. you know, making our own trays and or adapting something that we've used from like BP chassis, um, something mm-hmm. of that caliber that can hold a smaller pack in that essence. So, um, you know, I love that applications are so wide and one thing that i i do know that i do a lot and i don't know if a lot of people know this or not that i actually use a lot of your guys's drone batteries on my builds because of the size yeah. the compact size of them and like those i'll give you an example prime example someone asked you know hey i run a stereo system in my 64 what kind of battery should i use well marshall that really depends that really depends on a whether you're wiring up your audio system separate from your car, which I always recommend running two separate uh, operating systems in that fashion. You don't want to steal or take from <laughs> raw from Peter to pay Paul, you know, um, mm-hmm. if you want the best performance, you're going to want to separate those two options. But when you do so, the great thing is that Gen Zace offers packs that can go down to like even 850 milliamps. They're these tiny square batteries that I use for my audio. And I usually get about three, sometimes even four hours of runtime on my mob audio sound system. So, you know, there's lots of options out there. And one thing I love that you guys do at Gen Zace is you guys give specs on the sizes of all of these batteries uh, so that if you're looking for something for your application and or a battery for, let's say, a receiver pack, you know, your remote control for your into racing, Gen Zace more than often has something that will fit your application. And that's one thing that I don't see a lot of manufacturers in the battery scene even take the time to do, right? Um, It's this company, this battery, and it's these ratings. Sweet. Where are the specs? I want physical specs. And you guys always come to the table with specs. I love it. Yeah, no, definitely. And that's kind of, you know, the, the big deal with us being here local in California is we try to have relationships not only with, you know, big companies like Red Cat, uh, but also, you know, smaller time companies, you know, one that comes to mind is, you know, like BP Custom Chassis, as you mentioned, um, you know, who also make battery trays. And I, you know, I, I scope the pages, you know, I'm on Facebook. So if I see somebody kind of, uh, you know, coming out with a battery tray that seems to be popular, I, I do my best to try and see, you know, do our batteries fit that or do we need to make some modifications if this is really the way that the industry is going? We want to make sure that we're, we're adapting and we're coming to with what people want to run. And just be more transparent in that sense of, you know, there's, like you said, we have our entry level guys who we want to always take care of because we want to grow the hobby as much as we can. Yeah. You know, that mom and pop that walk into a shop and buy a new car for, you know, little Johnny at home or even for big Johnny, right? We want to make sure they're taken care of, but we want to take care of that builder that wants to be just a little bit different than everybody else. So we want to have a little bit of something for everybody. Right. I'm going to sound really biased here right now, but. I go around the U.S. quite a bit. I get to, I have an opportunity to go to different events 
all around the U.S. and check out different hobby shops when I'm in town. And shamefully, I size up a hobby shop by whether or not they carry Gen Zays. Like, do you guys carry Gen Zays? No. <laughs> uh, you guys probably aren't that, you know, like that big, you know what I'm saying? Uh, not to, not to yeah. knock on anyone out there because there's, again, uh, in your demographic to where you sell your RC cars, that may be uh, the battery choice. It may not be. But, you know, you, you kind of look around, you know, what servos do you guys carry? What batteries do you guys carry? You know, what products are on your wall? And you kind of size them up in that fashion. And I always love seeing a Gen Z banner. Because that just tells me that they're they're keeping an eye on quality for their customers, and that's very important to me, right? Um, so, Eric, man, I, I I bought a battery, you know, and, and I put it in my crawler. I crawled for a few hours. I went home. I just let the battery plugged in. It was off, but now you know I'm saying it's 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 kind of funky, you know. So, what is the proper way for me to store my batteries when I'm done with them? Is there a place that, uh, you know, that I should keep them in? What is the safekeeping for a LiPo? Yeah, so, and this is part of what I mentioned earlier was, you know, that that treatment of a LiPo, you know, it, it, it is going to go a long way. So you always want to make sure, um, because with LiPo batteries, um, well, batteries in general, anytime you leave them plugged in, and this goes, you know, for your electronics at home, if you leave something plugged in, it's going to be drawing power no matter what. So, you know, it, it, it happens with RC cars more, more often than not where you, you know, you come in from a long trail, you kind of put the car in the garage and say, I'll get to it later, take a nap, then forget about it for the next week. Well, that's going to be, you know, your battery was already, you were running it all day. Uh, so it's going to just kind of keep drawing power. So the, the biggest thing I always tell people, unplug your cars. As soon as you get off the trail, when you get in the car, just unplug it. That's the biggest thing. Uh, with LiPo batteries, uh, you know, here in California, we're blessed to have, you know, kind of fair weather most of the time. Um, but you want to make sure that you're, for one, you're not keeping it in scorching hot weather. Two, you're not keeping it in freezing weather. So if you're leaving your stuff out in your garage and you know it's going to snow tomorrow, bring those batteries inside, right? Because that cold is definitely going to kill uh, your cells quicker than you would think. I mean, I had, an, I had a moment where, you know, anytime I go to an event, because I don't like being that guy that shows up and then my batteries aren't working, I always check my batteries before I go. Um, even batteries that I'm about to sell. I'll pop open a couple and just do a quality control, you know, because anything can happen. And I had an event, you know, just last year where I went from sea level, 60, 70 degrees to, you know, a couple thousand feet elevation and below 30. And sure enough, I pulled boxes out, started selling them. I had already checked them. And then when, you know, I kept having people come back saying cells are dead. And I'm like, what do you mean? I just checked those this morning. And sure enough, cold weather just ended up taking out a good bunch of those cells so i made sure that everyone was good so temperature is going to be a big deal um and just making sure that you know you really keep track of the condition of your battery if your battery is really beat up and it, you know it, it's okay a lot of our hard cases are kind of meant to take abuse especially with the car bashing pros um but if they're punctured if there's you know a, a noticeable bend in it i actually had somebody come in yesterday that had a perfect bend down this side, which I have no idea how you even, you know, get to that. Um, but, you know, I, I, I told them, you know, I wish you'd videotape it because that would have been, I'm sure that would have been some epic footage, right. but, you know, just making sure that you're visually inspecting your batteries every time you go out um, to avoid those situations. Um, I always like to say LiPo batteries don't just go off on their own. There always has to be some sort of cause. Um, and most of the causes are one, uh, you know, they're avoidable too. They're noticeable. So most of the time you're going to be able to tell uh, before anything happens. Absolutely. You know, I'm going to piggyback on that and give you two experiences that I've had personally with LiPo mm -hmm. batteries. Um, <clears throat> Brent and I headed up North to Reno, right? It was the moon rocks. Get Fire together. And ice. Yeah. Fire and oh. ice. And uh, it was the coldest we've seen. It was pretty much like in a blizzard <laughs> happening. And we were only, we were running 3,800 milliamp packs. And we were only getting about 25, 20 minutes of runtime before we were hitting lipo cutoff. Like, what is going on? And we're looking at each other like, that is so weird. So we charged the batteries at the hotel before we went out there. And we were getting nothing. And that was my really quick and easy way of saying, these batteries hate the cold. They die, they mm -hmm. key over. It doesn't matter what brand, because these were not Gen Z's brand's batteries at the time. Um, you know, but it, it, everyone was having that same exact issue, you know, that in that fashion. Now, take that into consideration. 
going fast forward, I move out to, you know, the devil's armpit here in Arizona <laughs> and, um, I keep my batteries in the garage cause that's where I kept them back home in California. It was like you said, a lot fair weather. Didn't have to worry about those elements being an issue. And in one, I think one month of, you know, 115 degree heat out here, I lost six batteries that were out there. So I had to re you know, keep that in mind, guys, wherever you live, wherever you stay and reside, take advantage of knowing your elements and the elements that you're putting your vehicles, batteries and electronics through, um, because it's definitely going to change whether or not you're going to spend more money on batteries sooner than you expected, uh, get the shelf life that you want out of your batteries, and as well as just not having to keep dipping into your pockets to replace batteries that, uh, you know, we could have easily prevented that from happening. Speaking of prevention from killing batteries, um, I know the answer to this, but Eric, is there a tool that you'd recommend everyone should have in their tool bag when it comes to LiPo batteries? Yeah. Say that one more time because you broke yeah. up. There's a couple, right? Obviously, that's if you're getting the right one oh i'll have you know wall chargers and you know that that's fine uh, but something that can actually balance your cells is going to be key but a lipo checker is going to be key so you can get a lipo checker for really cheap on amazon we don't make them yet we'll see um but you know a lipo checker can be a lifesaver at times you know you're gonna one it's going to be able to tell you the voltage of your battery and then depending on how nice of a of a Lipo checker it is. Some of them can balance your battery. Some of them can uh, discharge, you know, too, discharge right? your battery. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and, so, and, and that's, so you're going to be able. That's one thing I think is like, I agree with you 100%. Having a lipo checker is your lifeline. I have multitudes of them. I actually have about three of them because I always lose them and then I find it again later. <laughs> but I always keep one in my lipo bag, right? So where all my batteries are stored, where whether I go to California for an event, I can travel with, I think, up to 10,000 actually even more than that i've carried quite a bit of batteries with me uh, but wherever i go i always have batteries right and uh so i keep a uh, lipo checker in there i keep a lipo checker in my backpack my trail bag that i take out with me and usually there's a third one that's on my workbench somewhere so um you know with that said guys cheap investment you can find them for 15 or as little as 10 bucks sometimes you can get a good one that can discharge a battery and put it in storage mode because at that point you leave it plugged in uh, set it and forget it, come back to it, and you know that it's at that storage rate to where then you're not going to dip too low and kill a battery or leave it overcharged to where you start to get that puff effect, right? Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I have one, I mean, you know, I, I never like to admit that I spent $30 on a LiPo checker, um, <laughs> but it's a, it's probably one of the best if, $30 that I've ever spent because if you it's, save, again, it, if you save one battery alone, dude, that covers yeah. that, you know, yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, so if you know you can get them on Amazon, um, it's cheap as five dollars, as expensive as thirty, and I'm sure there's something more expensive out there. But mine, um, I've used it at events personally to help people with their batteries. You know, if somebody comes up and says my batteries are all out of whack, I'll throw it on the lipo checker and just you know balance it there. If I don't have power, um, it can even charge my phone. So there's a lot of uses yeah. for it. You know, if, if you find the right one, so it's, it's a really cool one to have. Um, it'll tell you the health of your battery. You can individually check every cell. And it's, it's just a really nice one to have. I love it, man. So, you know, aside from having a good uh, checker and a balance port type of charger, you know, having a charger that can also put your batteries in the storage mode is key, yes. right? Um, I know that Genzase offers a, uh, um, and I have one of these, and it's my take everywhere charger is my mm -hmm. iMars, right? iMars yeah. 3. And it's a, it's been a great charger it's a small compact charger i don't know if you have one on your bench or not um but it's, I do. it's over there I'll grab awesome it's a small compact charger kind of goes everywhere with you it's it, really simple in that fashion and uh and it does all of those features which for the buck it's 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 actually a killer deal you know it's one of those things where it was just kind of like a must-have uh in your arsenal and take it from someone that I have about five, six chargers uh, at this point. And, you know, you use one for everything. But I have one here with me at work all the time. I have, there it is, um, you know, very simple, compact. I can take it anywhere with me. There's other chargers that can do something similar in that fashion. But, you know, I really felt that what came with it um, was really awesome, right? Um, all, the de all the specs that it comes with, all of the features that it has, just a really cool, you know, 
um, charger for the buck in that sense. Uh, so good charger, good lipo checker, great must haves to have when you're dealing with lipo batteries. Protecting your investment is key, right? You don't want to be the kind of person that keeps buying batteries, then you're bashing the brand because the battery failed. We really need to start looking at ourselves on how we take care of these batteries to make sure we're getting the most out of them. In my opinion, a battery is probably the next highest investment next to your your actual rig, your car, truck, bash or whatever you you own um so e we talked about the bashing fans and batteries for them we talked about batteries that help you know keep you know the enthusiasts crawling longer with the adventure series line of batteries that gen z's offers um i know that you are an avid follower of the uh, red cat lowrider page and you've been keeping an eye out on the monte carlo and the 64 you also own the 64 so um, are there any battery options that I guess would fit the stock configuration of the 64 by just changing, obviously, the uh, lead on the plug on the ESC from nickel metal hydride to lipo? Um, what are some options, I guess, if there are any that you've had experience with? Yeah, definitely. So when the 64 first came out, we actually did a video installing a light kit on it and actually talking about a couple of the battery options that we offer personally. Um, so we do have a nickel metal hydrate uh, replacement. That's just a stock replacement. You guys do actually include a jumper from the uh, banana plugs or the red plugs that you guys use to the um, white connectors that are kind of, you know, very popular with nickel metal batteries. And these are going to be, uh, you know, just a plug it in and go. Um, it's going to give you a little bit more milliamp. It's going to be a 5,000 as opposed to, I think you guys is a 3,500 if I'm not mistaken. So definitely longer um, run time, right? Longer run time. It's going to be a little bit heavier. So if you hit those switches, you're going to have a little bit of an easier time, uh, you know, getting that nose to go all the way up. So that's something that I always suggest if you want to stick to nickel, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you um, are just aware of, you know, just kind of what you're giving up with the lipo. Um, but I actually, um, you know, working with you earlier, uh, in the year, we, we realized that our red line battery, so um, I don't have one with me right now because we're out of stock in my 64s at home, right. uh, but we have our red line uh, line of batteries or a 2S um, that actually come with a bullet style plug. So if you're more into the hobby side and you can solder your own or even go to your local hobby shop because a lot of local hobby shops do offer soldering services, mm -hmm. um, which you know we always suggest go support your local hobby shop. Um, you know, it comes with an adapter for charge lead. All you got to do is cut it off and put a banana plug on there and you're, you're good to go with the 64 or do a connector swap on your 64. If that's more kind of your speed, which is what a lot of us do. Um, I know I personally swap mine to just straight bullets um, so that I could plug it in and it actually fits inside of the, uh, the trunk pan that's uh, with the 64 Correct. that's meant for the, um, the weights, you just take the weights out, put the battery in, and it allows you to have the trunk space completely empty so that you can add your weight in the form of scale accessories, right? Yeah. So you can add your tanks, you can add your batteries, you can add your speaker system um, without having to have clunky plates in there and just kind of tune it that way. Or I actually talked to the man himself, uh, Mr. Jevries, who likes to, uh, you know, he likes to push the envelope a little bit. So he actually told me, and I'm, I'm going to spill some secrets right now. I don't know if I was supposed to tell the public, but I'm going to tell the public anyways, because that's what I do. You know, <laughs> See, you hear you know it first. <laughs> um, he's actually a 5,000 million. Uh, yeah. So he's actually running our 5,000 million 3S battery in our, in his uh, Monte Carlo just post and, you know, hitting the nose. He said this one fits snugly in the battery tray. Um, it is a standard length. Um, it is going to be a little bit taller, so it's going to fit just under that trunk. Um, so if you want to have the weight, you're going to have plenty of runtime and a lot of power. Um, you know, that's a good option for you to go with. Right, right. And, and to touch base on that, guys, yeah, back uh, last year, early last year, um, Eric and I did a lot of um, working together with the Impala, and uh, I ended up fitting a 2200 2S pack inside of the gas tank with bullet connectors. I did use two millimeter spacers mm -hmm. on the trunk lid itself to space it down and that helped immensely you know with that take in mind the car did not hop uh anymore after that because it didn't have enough ballast weight but i didn't care i wanted to make my car more my 64 more of a dancer uh more scale looking and i did i have pumps batteries um four optima batteries two pumps uh 
four subwoofers with the amplifier, you know, I mean, and everything works. So, um, you know, I use the small, as we mentioned earlier, the 850 uh, 3X packs, and that powers mm-hmm. my radio, and I literally just fit it right between the two rear servos, and then I had the red line battery that powered the car that the battery just stayed stationary inside the gas tank. There's actually a little cavity that's already has a, a cutout open for the wires to go right from the tank, or the, okay. sorry, the trunk pan right into the car. So I just hit everything underneath the um, carpet that I put on it, and it worked great. So, um, you know, we, we're always collaborating in a sense to, to find cool ways to use, you know, the batteries and uh, to power up things. I know that, or if you guys don't know, you guys check me out. I My personal page on Instagram is uh, ASD underscore crawlers underscore RC. I have videos and pictures of me doing these things to the 64 and the Monty, um, playing with different battery packs. I add, you know, rock lights to my cars so that I can show off all the chrome, you know, undies. And again, I run that off of a 3S pack, the same 3S pack that runs my audio because it's such a low consumption at that point uh, that it'll it'll last uh, quite some time. Uh, Marshall, yes, they do have a website. So guys, all of the information on Gen's Ace that you guys would want to find out. Facebook, webpage, Instagram. Check out the description of this video. But Eric, if you can, why don't you drop this information to the folks that may only be listening and unable to read uh, the description. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, obviously our YouTube is going to be a very big source of knowledge if you want to just kind of know a little bit more about our batteries. Um, Anytime there's a new product, uh, we try to make a video with, you know, products that would our products that would fit well with and, and complement those videos. So that's going to be, you know, just Gen's Ace Battery on YouTube. Um, you can go to our website in the U.S. It's going to be genstattoo.com. So that's G-E-N-S tattoo.com. So it, it's a pretty simple website, and that's going to cover all of the U.S. Uh, here. If you're in Europe, I know we have a couple of people, you know, in, in, in Denmark and all over the U.K. that follow. It's just going to be genstattoo.de. Um, to order uh, if you're in Europe. And as always, follow us on social media. Yeah, I love it, man. I love it. And if you do own and or uh, rock Gen Zace batteries and you have some cool footage and at any point, make sure to tag them. You know, they're really good at uh, reusing stuff that they feel is valid and can benefit the community in any way. And I love any company that really thrives on supporting their community. And Gen Zace has been really great at doing that for many, many years. Um, so, Guys, if you guys have any last questions, make sure you drop them in right now um, so that I can ask Eric directly. While we wait for any questions to populate, Eric, where can we expect to see Jen's Ace? What events are we going to see you guys at this year? Definitely. So that's part of, you know, one of the hats that I wear here at Jen's Ace is I am the event coordinator as well. So my job is to find all the good events in the area, in the United States, in the Western Hemisphere, uh, to try and attend as many as I can. I like to support the hobby as much as I can, whether it's crawling, whether it's low riders, whether it's drag racing. Um, so you'll see us, you know, a couple of big events you'll see us next month. We'll be at the Ultimate Scale Truck Expo uh, in Florida. So we'll be there. Um, like I said, I'm in California. So uh, we will have to do uh, King of the Streets in April. That's going to be a really big one. So if you're into drag racing, come on out to that. Um, we're going to be at Crawl for uh, ASD crawl, crawl for cure is no longer a thing. ASD crawl in September. That's a big one for us. Is that, um, is you know, that, we always go all out. Is that their like first year or the ASD crawl? I don't know. Is that there's, a a, thing? there's a five year waiting list to get into anything ASD crawler. So I, that's, well, that's, that's all I know. That's only if it's you, but. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 No. Uh, so we'll be, you know, we'll be at pro them by the fire and we're going to try and make as many, you know, small local events as we can throughout. And if anybody has events that they want us to come to and it's not on our list, I'm, we're always, you know, I monitor the Facebook page. So send us a message to tell them, know that you let them know you want to talk to Eric and um, I'll get those messages and we'll get out there. And if you see me at events, I always have goodies to give away. And I love, you know, seeing people rock our stuff. So I have shirts and hats and stickers, which is all the fun stuff that people love. I love it. And just so you guys know, for the entire month of February, any purchases made from the Gen Zace website, Eric will officially sign himself. Um, and, uh, so, and he'll actually take a selfie with your picture and he will post it on his personal page. So what is your personal Instagram that you're going to be posting these pictures on? You know what? Because, because Mr. Red Cat won't do it. If you guys put uh, in the notes, have Eric sign it. I'll do it just for, for anybody. Hey, listen, uh, so if you're ordering, my, 
I'll my, actually do it. And I'll throw in some stickers. My shipping guys are so fast, I can't get out there to sign anything. Just saying. Okay. My shipping um, guys read notes. Oh, man, there you go. There you go. So, guys, <laughs> if you want Eric's autograph, make sure to go ahead and enter that into your notes. And Eric will take a selfie with your battery. And if you're lucky enough, he'll be eating a taco while he's holding your battery. So uh, make sure you check him out, guys. Um, Eric, where can they find you? I know that you're an avid RCer. Um, tell them, tell the guys where they can find you and some of your content. Yeah, definitely. So find me. I mean, my, my personal Facebook page is open to all RC enthusiasts. I love answering questions there. So you can always find me. It's Eric Sarsen on Facebook, or you can find me on Instagram at Black Pearl Garage. Um, and that's just pretty much where I live every day. So come by, say hi. I love answering questions. Um, you know, if it's a night, I might, it might wait till the morning, but I do my best to answer people whenever they have any battery related questions, or even just in general, if you need some guidance in the hobby, you know, I've always been more than happy to help people out. And, you know, because the, the more people that are doing things, uh, you know, that in the hobby and the more that I answer questions, I feel there's more happy people, the hobby grows and it just gets better and better every time. So, uh, you know, I'm always happy for to, to be a part of that. I love it, man. That's what it should be about, man. Remember, guys, when you're out there helping each other out and or you see someone struggling on a trail, man, there's nothing more better than anyone can ever do than just to extend a hand. Right. Sometimes needing a tool, uh, having a spare pin you know body pin uh, drive shaft goes a long way so you know make sure you guys are helping each other out keeping it positive no matter what avenue of our seeing that you guys are involved in folks like jen's ace keeps an eye on people like that and they have a really awesome list of team drivers that are out there doing the exact same thing helping everyone they can so uh keep that going that's a train of thought going moving forward eric man I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us, uh, letting us know a little bit more about Gen's Ace to the people that may not have known much about you guys and how cool Gen's Ace actually really is uh, when you compare it to, you know, other manufacturers out there. Very approachable. I love that. And, uh, man, I love what you guys are doing out there this year. And I look forward to seeing you at the, an event nearby. So I think you and I, will, we're going to touch base next month at USTE, if I'm not mistaken. So, man, uh, from all of us here at Red Cap Bro, I, I appreciate you. Thank you again for, um, you know, just hanging out with us. Yeah, definitely. And this is kind of more for the, you know, because I really only do it in California events when we're camping. So if you see me at an event and I'm, I'm camping, I have an RV or I have a, a, a just a regular camp spot. Um, ever This happened ever since uh, an event last year. Apparently, I'm the pancake guy. So if you ever see me in the morning and you walk by my camp, I got pancakes for you guys. So that's kind of, you know, it, it kind of goes back to saying, uh, you know, my, my love for the hobby and my love for what we do here. Um, uh, it, it's funny. It started with the, actually it started with the Operation 11 Charlie guys that are out from uh, the yep. East Coast. Yep. Um, you know, I was making pancakes, you know, pancake batter is not that expensive. So I always buy it in bulk. And for me, I'd rather, you know, so, I, don't, I don't want people out hungry out on the trail. So. You know, if, right. you're, if your stomach's full, you're having a good time. Let's Let, get your pancakes with Derek. Listen, guys, and, and for you guys that don't know out there, his pancakes are extremely fluffy. <laughs> They're really good. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Um, but, but with that said, um, the next question is, and um, <clears throat> I quote, when will Gen Zace release a taco edition battery for Oscar from Red Cap? And then the follow-up question is, is there a way to have a pancake edition Eric battery pack uh honestly anything's possible uh all we got to do is let's talk about it you know what i mean so <laughs> game on <laughs> you, I, I know the design guy at gen Z, so i can definitely see if we can do something <laughs> so uh <laughs> you know it, 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 who knows if we might have to do something and make it a charity thing i'm always more than happy to do something like that um, you know, maybe who knows? Maybe let's talk about it. Gen Z's charger well, comes out. I'm, I'm going to start a new foundation called Tacos for Humanity. So, um, <laughs> guys, if you guys uh, don't know, again, uh, make sure you check out Gen Z's. Follow them on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Check out their website. Robust as can be. Lots of great information for you guys uh, with specs and so on. If you have any questions, you can. Definitely reach on out to the guys and support as well as reach out to Eric directly and he can help out. Once again, with every order made in the month of February, you will get an autograph on your battery box from Eric himself, the pancake King. So put it in the notes, make sure you put in the put notes, in the note. please make sure you put in the notes. I want pancake Kings autographed. So, all right guys, man, once again, 
Much love. You guys stay safe out there. We'll see you guys next week. Same time, same channel, hopefully with another awesome episode. From all of us here at Red Cat to all of you, we appreciate you guys, and we'll see you guys very soon.